Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Super Meat Boy, the Super Meat World Edition. So this is a chapter called Starlight, which is one of the chapters that shipped with the initial Super Meat World update. And I gotta say, this is one of the hardest goddamn chapters uh, I've ever played in my entire life. I actually got off work early today. Uh, and was like, you know, what am I going to do tonight? You know, maybe I'll come home, uh, play a little bit of Super Meat Boy, get a little bit of recording done, and then relax and enjoy my evening. Well, uh, it's fucking midnight, and I started playing this about, I don't know, maybe three or four hours ago. Uh, just recording all of these levels took me almost two hours in and of itself. These levels are punishing. Uh, if I'm going to keep going with that kind of hacky, uh, cheesy, how many Meat Boys of difficulty is this? This is definitely a nearing 5 out of 5 Meat Boys. Uh, none of the levels are as hard as, say, like, the last Dark World Caught in Alley levels, but they're all pretty goddamn tricky, and, uh, you know, on the whole, I'd put uh, some of the harder levels here actually on par with some of the levels in the Kids' Warp Zone, I know that's, that's gonna boggle the mind for, uh, for some people, but seriously, some of this shit is fucking impossible. I spent over a half hour on some of these levels alone. But anyway, part of that is because I'm out of practice, but if the person who made these levels is listening, I hope you die in a terrible, spontaneous combustion incident that makes it on Ripley's Believe It or Not. And one of the main reasons it's so difficult is because there's so many of these goddamn heat-seeking bullet bills that also shoot out uh, more missiles when they land, and I'm lucky enough here that I just kind of last through, I guess, sheer random chance long enough to get this key in the middle. Uh, but usually I am not so lucky, and uh, if you're watching a level on here, uh, odds are I have done a significant amount of editing to get it in this shape that it's in. This is one of the rare exceptions that I actually get on my first try, and by rare exceptions I mean this might be the only one out of the entire 20 that I actually get on my first try. Although, I, maybe I got the last one on my first try, too. I wasn't paying attention. I was too busy bitching uh, about how difficult this difficult game is. Oh, this difficult game is hard. Oh, who fucking who? Anyway, uh, this, <laughs> if you're up for the challenge of this, this will definitely lengthen the time that that Super Meat World update will take you to beat. Uh, I know some people out there are going to be like, well, Northern Line, you haven't even played the Expert Remix chapter yet. That's the case, and, um... Yeah, I'm not even sure how recording for that is going to go down, if it goes down. For those of you who aren't familiar, Expert Remix is uh, basically just uh, levels that were really popular or fan favorites from the uh, the original game got remixed into harder versions for Super Meat World. Uh, a chapter, that chapter actually is also out on Xbox Live. A number of people have been asking me, uh, you know, how do I access Super Meat World? I, I'm, I don't have it myself. Well, uh, the easy answer is, first off, be on the PC version of the game. This is only available on the PC version. Second, have 20 bandages, which I assume at this point in the game's life cycle most people have, but if you don't, that could be what's stopping you. Third, make sure the, the version you have is the Steam version, because it's a Steam exclusive, as far as I know, anyway. Uh, that's what I've heard. Uh, and finally, update your game through Steam, then, like, turn it on and update it. And if none of that works, maybe, uh, you know, do some soul-searching and potentially remember the fact that you might have pirated the game. So, uh, yeah, you won't get automatic updates if you, if you did Torrent Super Meat Boy. But I'm sure there are probably torrents out there with the update, if you're so inclined. Not that I'm promoting that or anything. Uh, obviously this game is worth your money. I'm assuming that most of the people who are watching this video already have obtained a copy of the game in one way or another, so I'm not... I don't have a big enough head to think that my offhand comment there may have, uh, may have hurt sales at all. Anyway, there's two things that these levels of this chapter does that really, really annoy me and cause me to be incredibly frustrated. It's these missile launchers, which I already mentioned, and then it also does a number of really, really tricky wall jumps, and hopefully I'll be able to illustrate that on, uh, on some of these future levels. This one is not so bad, and uh, you know, by saying it's not so bad, I'm duly acknowledging that this would be one of the hardest levels, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, on the disc version of Super Meat Boy. But, uh, you know, within the context of this chapter, it's definitely in the easiest 10. And actually, so is this one. This one's not so bad. The game's firing, uh, you know, ice fireballs at you like it thinks it's Sub-Zero. And all you gotta do is avoid these and then get yourself up to the top. Uh, in this, in this uh, particular level, there's nothing you haven't seen before. But there are some really, really novel puzzles here. I kind of waver 
uh, back and forth on how I feel about this chapter. While I was playing it, I was frustrated beyond belief and basically ready to go on a, a fucking polemic about how, oh, so what? Like, you can, you can make levels that are hard. Who gives a shit? Try making levels that are fun. But I've kind of softened up a little bit now that I've actually finished it. But so I, I had all these analogies planned out. I was like, the designer of this level reminds me of, like, the guitarist from Dragon Force. It's like, sure, you can, you can, you have great technical skill. You can play killer solos, but who cares? Why don't you make something people enjoy? Uh, but anyway, I, I'm, I'm digressing a little bit. I'm letting my rage take hold of me. I'm falling back towards the dark side. Now, on this level, we're, uh... Out trying to outrun this strip of full fat cream that's coming after us. Yeah, I really enjoy levels like this where, you know, you've got to continually, like, avoid this Indiana Jones style obstacle that's coming at you. Another level similar to that is, uh, what's it called? The Tower in VVVVVV. And if you saw my Let's Play of that, you know how fond I am of that particular level. This level, on the other hand, uh, you know, I would politely ask it to get down on its knees and suck my dick until I came down its throat and hopefully it suffocated on my seed. Uh, because this level you gotta get four keys, and the entire fucking time, this missile launcher just will not shut the fuck up. It just chases you over and over and over, and fires like, what feels like a missile every two damn seconds. So, you know, eventually, uh, I've completely broken my own pattern here, but I, I do uh, eventually beat this level to my own fucking surprise. Uh, this level probably took me... You know, it's sad to say, this one probably took you about 10 minutes of uh, playing it straight through. Some of the other ones in this game, or in this chapter, I should say, took me as much as 30 minutes. Particularly the last level. Now, this level is actually, I, I really enjoy this level, because it makes you, you see that key, you see this uh, lock situation here, and you're like, oh, I gotta get the key, and then run as fast as the locks in order to get to the bandage girl. That is impossible. So what you actually have to do is uh, they trick you a little bit. You have to run around here, get the key, and then you have to use those saws and columns to actually propel yourself all the way over to the left side, where there's a few holes in the spikes on that wall that you can use to propel yourself up to the saw, and, you know, if you can jump around the saw well enough, then you can get the bandage girl, and you can see that all in action here, in case you couldn't follow my, my words as I said it. This is another level that took me a long fucking time, and it's 99% because of this jump you have to do at the start. You have to land on this, uh, this sideways scrolling platform here, or I guess vertical scrolling platform here, uh, and then propel yourself through that little gap to get over here, and then avoid the fireballs as well. Um, borderline impossible. A lot of this this chapter for me just feels like brute force. Like uh, even if I know exactly what I what I have to do, and I've, I've done it a few times before, it's it's not pure chance, but it feels a lot less like skill than it does like you know maybe one out of every ten times this is just gonna work because the fireballs are gonna be in the right place. Or you know maybe my skill is just not good enough to tell that it requires skill. But it seems an awful lot like luck to me uh, right now. And this level, I was actually uh, really confused at the start of it, because I was like, how the fuck do I reach those uh, disappearing blocks? Turns out, duh, just jump at them and you'll be okay. Unless you do what I do and jump off the side. And so all you gotta do is get yourself up here, and then on the way back down, it's actually usually a little bit easier. This is the hard jump right there, where you gotta work yourself through those, those saws that are coming the wrong way. But overall, that one's not so bad. This one is really bad, actually, uh, just because of the art style. I actually watched a talk recently from uh, Jonathan Blow, the developer of Braid. He talked about uh, on Braid he wanted everything in the f everything that you could interact with to be bright and everything that you couldn't to be like clearly in the background. Well, here the background is almost uh, invisible basically because of the shades that they've picked. But still those saws that you know, you might imagine they can't hurt you because they they look like they're passive in the background actually can. So I'm really not a fan of the color palette that was selected for that level. This is one of the levels that Again, uh, you know, it's kind of become a meme of my own right now to say this, but, uh, you know, if I had hair, I would have certainly pulled it out playing this level. So many difficult jumps here. The first one is tough, and you gotta jump around this saw, which uh, it can be a real pain in the ass, but those aren't even the tricky ones. Once you get that down, then shit starts to get actually real. So if I can actually make this jump, I'll be able to uh, show that off to you. But it's, it's still pretty damn hard. I maybe only got past this first saw, like... 30% of the time. And then from here, you gotta jump over that pool with a wall jump. And then here's the really hard one. You gotta work your way up here, uh, like, layer by layer, which is a constant fucking struggle. 
but luckily uh, I managed to get it on my, I don't know, three or four hundredth attempt. I feel like I died, you know, maybe at least 200 to 300 times just filming this. This is another level that's a real pain in the ass. Uh, this first part, you gotta jump in between the fireballs, and then, well, you can see it right there. I'm not gonna try to explain what that yeah, Romanian gymnastics move was. But suffice to say, it took me a long time to figure out how to do that one. This is another level that was a real pain in the ass for me. Uh, I won't even try to explain to you how to beat this level. I'll just let it happen when it when it eventually does happen. But uh, again, suffice to say, this one took me, you know, close to uh, close to a half hour to figure out the mo for on my own. And again, it, it, even once I figured it out, it took me forever to actually get the uh, to get those principles in motion. But you know, let's let bygones be bygones. So now we're on Durandel, which I'm probably horribly mispronouncing, uh, and I'm sure it's a reference to something, but I'm not familiar with it. Um, and this is another one. This one actually took me by far the longest. This one took me over, an half an over a half an hour. Um, what you have to do is actually pretty straightforward on this one. The problem is that there's one fucking homing missile that shoots out that got me probably 80% of the time I actually got up to where it's gonna go. And then, the, uh, there's a really, really difficult jump that you have to make at the very, very end of the level that killed me more times than I'd like to admit. So what we're witnessing here is my actual successful run, so let's, let's let the positivity wash over me. So you can see I'm barely avoiding those, uh, those missiles that are shooting out there. That was the problem that really got to me on this level. Now here's the jump that's tough as shit, but uh, you know, again, make it look easy when you've got the power of uh, multimedia editing. And then I actually, indeed, finished the chapter despite what I thought would happen. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.